Hello friends. Today I'm here with a set of 10 mental maths questions about place value. If your child knows this concept, then this video will help them to test their skill and understanding of the concept. Welcome back to Happiness Mantra. Do subscribe if you're new and if you're already subscribed, then please do like the video. Also comment your answers. I'll be waiting. The first question in this worksheet is eight hundreds and sixteen ones. So we'll have eight hundred and sixteen. Usually, this is written as one tens and six ones. But if we write sixteen ones together, the child should know that it means sixteen as a whole. So obviously, once this concept is clear, they know that the answer is eight one six, right? Six tens less than seven hundred. Again, six tens is sixty. So it is going to be seven hundred minus sixty, which gives them the answer. In eight hundred and forty-two, the digit four is in the dash place. Now, for place value, we should tell children to write one tens hundreds on the number. Once each digit has its own place, we can easily find out the place value. So in this case, it is tens for four. After this, what is the place value and face value of the underlined digit? Now the underlined digit here is four again. As I mentioned earlier, we should first write the place values on top to make our job easier and get children in the habit of doing this right from the beginning. Once they have this thing in place, we now know that the place value is 400 or 4 hundreds. whereas the face value is the number itself always so the face value of this is 4 face value of this is 9 and so on next we have question number 5 four hundreds and eight ones has the same value as which of these numbers so simple to check four hundreds two options and eight ones one option so obviously this is the correct answer alternately the children can add 400 and 8 ones reach this and then they can check through addition both ways of doing it are completely okay but this saves time a little question 6 there are dash tens in 540 Now here again it's just a little difficult for children to understand the language at times. It's a simple question but understanding it sometimes makes it a little tough for them. The way of solving it is of course the same. So there are four tens in this number 540. that is something that the children would have commonly done but actually when we are talking of the complete number of tens here we are talking about 50 tens from here and 4 tens from here so it is 50 tens and 4 tens which means it is actually 54 tens now why i made this distinction because this is the digit in the tens place but the question is how many tens are there right not the digit so four tens would just make it 40 but what about the 500 part of it so 500 actually means 50 tens how does that happen 50 tens right gives us 500 so technically 500 also means 50 tens this is a concept of regrouping and children need to be clear on this as well so in this question the correct answer is 54 tens 
Now which is the smallest? 700 one tens and two ones. So this number is 712. Again, I would prefer if the children write ones, tens and hundreds first and then try to fit in the digits. Nine hundreds and three ones. So we have a digit here and we have a digit here. Nothing here, so we add a zero. If the children don't write this, chances are they would simply write 93, which would make it wrong. Now this is jumbled and given. So four ones, eight tens and seven hundreds. Seven in the hundreds place, eight here and four here. See, since we have this written right here, it is easier to understand and write it. Three tenths and seven hundreds. So three tenths and seven hundreds. Nothing here, which means we add a zero here. Now, once we have all the digit digits, it's easy to judge this is the smallest. And in case the question asked which is the largest, we could have said this was the largest, right? It's just a matter of getting them into the habit of doing it correctly and having a little patience and understanding while they're solving maths. Moving on to question number eight. 320 is same as dash tens. Now this is something which I had earlier explained. It's again a concept of regrouping. So when we have 300 and 20. It gives us 320. So how many tens does this give us? It gives us simply 20 tens and because of the 300 it gives us another 30 tens. Sorry, it gives us two tens here. So the answer is 32 tens. Two tens in the tens place and 300 which is actually 30 tenths. This is simple except for the fact that it's jumbled. So again, the children need to be a little attentive and they will get the answer as 800, six tenths and two ones. 300 is equal to dash tenths. Again, you can get it right from here. The numbers are the same, but it's again the concept of regrouping, remember. So when we have 300, we know that it is 30 tenths. And how do we know this? I'll again reiterate, 30 tenths. For tenths, we're writing the actual number 10. So when we do 30 into 10, it gives us 300. So 300 is actually 30 tenths. So we write 30 tens here and it is how many ones? Now for that, when we do 300 into one, instead of ones, we are using the number for it. The answer is 300. So it is actually 300 ones. So 300 is equal to 30 tens or 300 ones. Remember that in the concept of place value, this regrouping concept is very essential and oftentimes children get a little confused in it. So give them a lot of practice in this concept. The other things will just follow. Thank you. Happy learning. Happy teaching.